I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course. Today, Brad, we're going to talk about just three different things. You know, a lot of people, uh, they're told they have either arthritis, bursitis, tendonitis. Right. And we just thought we'd tell you the difference between the three. Sure. Just yeah, I think a lot of people get really scared that they have some kind of disease that is just going to tear their body apart. Although I could, but I mean, once you understand the names, it might make you feel a little bit better in what you're dealing right. with. Arthritis, I think everybody knows. Sure. Uh, but the bursitis, I think, scares well, people. I think even arthritis, people, they, they, they talk about having arthritis in their back muscles. and Yeah, they don't always understand yeah. that. It can't be where they think it is. Right. So let's just start. We'll start with arthritis, the sure. most common one. Uh, with arthro, arthro means joint. So we're oh, gonna, right, yeah, joint. We're going to break the word apart into those two components. Yeah. Arth or arthro and itis. Itis. Itis means inflammation. So in every case here we're talking about inflammation. By the way, I want to make the point too. These three things are different and they do are often treated differently. Sure. Don't you agree, Brad? Mm -hmm. You bet. And so there's some things you might do uh, similar in each case, but in every case, uh, I would do something a little bit different if, if, if uh, I knew it was arthritis versus bursitis. Sure. So, all right, arthritis, you have joint where you have bone comes to bone, yep. and the in between is what forms is a joint, and, and so you're going to inflammation of that joint. Want to show a joint here? Sure, so we got the knee joint right here, and we got a model of a knee joint right here. So here, I'm going to pull that out of there, use your imagination there, and here's the knee joint. Okay, now. The patella, the, t the kneecap is here, which is here, and I'm going to flip that open. Now with this model we can open up so we can look inside the joint, if you can zoom in a little bit. And here's the actual joint, okay, we've got the condyles here, okay, and the femur, and then the tibia, the top of the tibia plateau, and there's cartilage in here. In a healthy joint, this will look pristine and white, and it'll slide back and forth, be very smooth. But once arthritis gets in there, it attacks that cartilage and cause problems and it, boy, I've seen pictures of people before they have their knee surgery, they actually yesterday a patient of mine brought it in, look at my knee before I had because a surgeon gave him a picture of it, it was just, it looked painful. It all wears away. Yeah, yeah. hers actually had a hole in there, it was, yeah, yeah. so uh, arthritis so because, or cartilage yeah. just can start to wear away, I mean it, it all starts just deteriorating. Right. Now that's a severe case. You can have arthritis for years and, and not have problems, particularly if you yeah. treat it. We have videos on how to work with your arthritis. You get old enough, you're probably going to get some arthritis. Right. So inflammation of the joint. The joint. All right. Let's go to tendonitis. Tendonitis. All right. Tendons are the end of the muscle. So you have a long muscle and it narrows up and it becomes a tendon and that tendon attaches to the bone. So let's take the quadricep muscle. Right. right. There let's you go. go. That's the long muscle here. There's actually four muscles that come together. They attach onto the, the kneecap, and then there's a tendon that attaches to the bone. Right. So that's the tendon. So if we're going to look at this section from here to here, I'm going to pull that out of Bob's leg last time because I pulled it out of mine before. We're going to use his. So there's the four muscles coming right. together, attaching to the kneecap, and then form, making a tendon. And, and this is pretty realistic. You know, muscle's always red in color. It's got a lot of blood in it. And the tendons are white in color. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if we pull that off from the tibia where it's connected to, that's your tendon, and, and the patella is actually part of the tendon. It's kind of interesting. Do you remember what they call that that type of a bone when it's involved with the tendon? Tendo, what the hell? What are you talking about? There's a name for it when you have a bone and a tendon. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember it either. But I know it's a special name. There's another one in your foot. Anyways, so that's, uh, and then the tendon, and it could, it could be the tendon you need. It could be the tendon. You know, wherever you have yeah, a tendon, tendons you have tendonitis. Yeah, a lot of, lot of tendonitis in the shoulder, right. a lot of uh, tendonitis on the, on the wrist, Exactly. a lot of tendonitis on the knee. This is jumper's knee, we call it. I could get tendonitis in my jaw from talking sure too much. Sure you could. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so that's tendonitis. Inflammation of a tendon. Typically, you take time off. You do not use that muscle as much to take irritation away, anti-inflammatories, etc. There's a lot of different right. ways to approach it. The last one is, I think, probably the one that people understand the least, right. is bursitis. Now, bur is short for bursa. A bursa is a fluid-filled sac or pad. So to kind of give an indication of a, a demonstration of what that looks like, I just took this little ball, and if you flatten it out, that would be a bursa. So you got it on your shoulder. You've got it's a not, bursa on your yeah, shoulder. I have a bursa on my shoulder, but what the bursa does is it helps bones, I mean, helps muscles and tendons 
glide over the bone. Okay. It actually makes it like uh, frictionless. Sure. So it helps the whole. So if you have a bone here, you have a muscle on top here, or a tendon, you know, that tendon can glide over the bone very right. easily. So when the muscle is contracting, it's going to keep that. Think about a rope going over the edge of a rock. Right, there you go. And Perfect. if you slide that rope, the rope being the tendon, you slide that rope back and forth over the rock, it's going to wear out. But if this was underneath the, the rope, now it would slide and hopefully forever. Right. And, and unfortunately, that's how often bursitis occurs, is repetition. A lot of repetitive action. Right, bursitis. Bursitis right. and tendonitis uh, are repetitive actions. Sure. Um, or the other one, I mean, because they gave a lot of examples here of um, housemaid's knee. Um, that's a patella. That's pre-patella. Bursitis is a bursa right on the top of your kneecap. Again, with the model, it would be, here's the tendon. Here's yeah. the, it's going to be, and they're not that big. That's a oh, really big a model. Big they're very thin. They're very, they're very small. small. And I, when I had my anatomy class, I remember that there were 17 bursas just in your knee. You know, there's there are bursas there's throughout your whole body. Everywhere. But the one we're talking about is right here, which is right there that you kneel on. So if you're on hands and knees a lot, you could develop. Well, there's bursitis. one here and there's one here. Oh, so sure. one one is called house. This is an appropriate housemaid's knee. The other one is called clergyman's knee. And again, what it is is people are kneeling all the time. I knew people that therapists that would get it because they were working on the mats all day with sure. people, and they're kneeling like this and doing this with people. And I right. had a therapist that got it. Sure. The one that I've seen also, if you're using your elbow a lot for some for some reason, I've seen the bursa here. Have you ever seen somebody get a really swollen elbow? Right. That's generally the bursa, the bursa there right. that's, that's swollen up. And that can be pretty significant. The other one that's real common is a trochanteric bursa. That's on the hip. Right. And and that's the person, if you touch right on your hip, oh, 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 oh. Walking is usually not yeah, very fun. And a lot of times they have weakness in the hip and they're they're really putting stress on that sure. bursa. So that's the difference between the three itises. Uh, all the itises. Do you remember the joke or not? The old lady who said she slept with uh, three men last three night. Three men last night. Art Ritis. <laughs> Bert Itis. Or Bursitis, I guess it would be. Bernie Itis. And Ben Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a third. The humor just keeps yeah. rolling, doesn't it? We are good, Bob. So, 40 years and older, sign up and subscribe. That's right. Sign up to our website. Thank you. Thanks.